Be an involved parent. If you're not as involved in your child's life as you could be, try to make it a point to become more involved. For example, attend more of your child's extracurricular activities. Learn the names of your child's teachers and attend parent-teacher conferences. And last, help your child with homework and projects. Don't take an extreme position. The goal of a California family law judge is for both parents to have frequent and continuing contact with their children. This is because the public policy stated in California Family Code 3020 is as follows. The legislature finds and declares that it is the public policy of this state to assure that children have frequent and continuing contact with both parents after the parents have separated or dissolved their marriage or ended their relationship, and to encourage parents to share the rights and responsibilities of child rearing. Avoid taking an extreme position in family law court over custody and visitation, such as stating, I don't want my ex to ever see the children again. If you have anger issues regarding the other parent, seek counseling. Take corrective action on any character flaws. If you have problems with drugs, alcohol, or anger management issues, you should take corrective actions immediately. You should take advantage of any treatment programs to address these issues as soon as possible. In a custody battle, you should expect that the other spouse will bring up your character flaws to the court's attention. Family law judges normally look favorably on parents who are proactive in dealing with their character flaws. Don't create incriminating evidence against yourself. In family court, there are many disputes that come down to he says, she said accusations. Without concrete evidence, the family court judge often dismisses these accusations as unsubstantiated. Incriminating physical evidence, however, has the power to sway a family law judge on critical issues. For example, it is never a good idea to send an email or a text, leave a voicemail, or post a photograph on a social media site if you would not want it published on the front page of a newspaper. Parties in divorce on occasion impulsively send emails, voicemails, photographs, or text messages to each other or third parties which ultimately end up in front of the family law judge. You should also be aware of what others are posting on social media sites that may incriminate you and may be used against you in family law court. Don't lose self-control in public. The divorce process is stressful, and an ex is in a unique position to push a former partner's buttons. It is imperative to always maintain self-control especially in front of the family law court judge, the court, service counselors, teachers, neighbors, and your child. Along with not creating damaging physical evidence, when determining parental fitness in a custody battle, an angry public outburst can tip the scales. A family law judge equates a lack of self-control with poor judgment, which raises a parental fitness issue. If you have a tendency to, as they say, lose it, get counseling. Don't disparage the other parent. Family Code Section 3020 states the following. The legislature finds and declares that it is the public policy of this state to assure that children have frequent and continuing contact with both parents after the parents have separated or dissolved their marriage or ended their relationship and to encourage parents to share the rights and responsibility of child rearing in order to affect this policy, except where the contact would not be in the best interest of the child. Family law judges look favorably on the parent most able to share and promote a relationship with the other parent. Each parent brings different skill sets and experiences to the child's development. The family law judge is most likely to lean in favor of the parent most able to recognize the value of having both parents in the child's life. A parent who is constantly disparaging his or her ex 
cannot be counted on to promote a healthy co-parenting relationship with the other parent. Tearing the other parent down in front of a child is psychologically devastating to that child. During and after a divorce, a parent must avoid making the other parent the bad guy. Don't speak ill of the other parent or of that parent's relatives, friends, or loved ones. Remember the old adage, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Don't put the children in the middle. Do not discuss divorce issues with your child or allow the child to hear you discussing your differences with your ex regarding custody and visitation. Never make visitation arrangements directly with a child under the age of 12. Do not send messages or money with your child. Do not ask your child for information about the other parent's household, friends, income, or activities. Never suggest visitation arrangements with your child you have not previously discussed with the other parent. Always confirm with the other parent any visitation arrangements made with a child age 12 or older. If you have problems communicating verbally with your ex, use email. If necessary, get a court order for both parents to use websites designed to facilitate communication between parents in a neutral medium where everything is recorded and can be seen or disclosed to the family law judge. Two examples of such websites are Our Family Wizard and Talking Parents. The takeaways. Be an involved parent. Two, remember that an extreme position will not normally work in family court. So take a reasonable position. Three, address any character flaws in your life immediately. Four, don't create incriminating evidence that can be used against you by your ex. Five, try to maintain a level head and avoid losing self-control in public. Six, don't disparage the other parent. And seven, don't put the child in the middle. Putting your child in the middle negatively affects your child and reflects negatively on yourself in front of the family law judge. A word to the wise. Remember, when in doubt, ask yourself whether your actions could negatively affect your child. If so, you should probably refrain from those actions. 